Well, welcome to Blood Bowl 3 Season Finals. Great to have you here for a great weekend of action. Tons of tons of good stuff coming your way. My name is Adam Savage. Delighted to be your host here. I'm joined by the almighty Andy Davo, Jimmy Fantastic. Fellas, we are here in a studio together celebrating Blood Bowl. This is, Andy, this is amazing. Oh, this is the, probably the best thing that's ever happened to the online video world. Brilliant. It's brilliant. Yeah, fantastic. Amazing for Blood Bowl. <laughs> He's always on brand, this one. Fantastic. <laughs> Everything's fantastic. Uh, we are so excited to be here bringing you all the action. Obviously, we started last weekend. We're going to bring you up to speed as well as kind of like get you excited for what's coming your way here as well. Um, but uh, it's a really great, I guess, a great time for the game and kind of for the series and, and to see the evolution of things as well here. Um, I know you guys are excited at home, but Andy, it's uh, we're in for a big, a big finals this weekend and tomorrow we crown our champion. Absolutely. And it would be interesting to see who manages to get through. Uh, just some big names. We've lost some big names as well, yeah. which is incredible already. Yeah, lost some massive names. Elliot and Crucifer straight out and uh, some big names left in. If, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Jimmy, all the predictions that you made were completely <laughs> incorrect. So <laughs> whatever Jimmy says today, do the opposite of that. Uh, let's take a look at our format and get you guys up to speed exactly how we got here in the first place here. Uh, firstly, of course, we had qualifications. And Jimmy, we had a play in there, 56 players. Yeah, so the, the play-in was comprised of uh, 54 people came from the ladder in various qualifications and two people qualified from the uh, NAF kickoff event and then they played kind of a Swiss system to get to the 14 players to join Artemis and Crystal Hunter who were first and second in the ladder. Yeah, and last weekend, of course, we had our 16 that started last weekend. We're now down to only six players. We lost 10 last weekend and as Jimmy said, we lost some big names here, Ant. We did, and I'm out as well, which is uh, a shame. The biggest name, <laughs> the biggest name in this. Uh, but of course, you can see, uh, we'll have a look at the brackets very shortly here. But of course, um, one part of this as well, not only is there uh, the accolade of becoming the champion here, the season final champion here, but um, of course, cash prizing. There's cash prizes oh. to be won too, which is, I mean, what does this mean for the community as well? Can the opportunity here for our players here, Andy, to actually take away some fantastic money as well? Oh, the money, the money's fantastic. Uh, for me personally, I thought that the best thing was the, the, the accolade of winning it, winning it all. Uh, but walking away with the top prize, I think, of 1,300, uh, sorry, 2,000 pounds, uh, 2,000 euros is, is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, great, great to see the prize support. Like, you know, fantastic. <laughs> We've yeah. said that a lot already. We have said we, there will be a lot of fantasticisms <laughs> over the course of this weekend, I'm sure, here. But as you can see on screen, these are the different cash prizes uh, available to our uh, players. You can see here running one through eight there on screen. The top actually uh, 2,000 uh, you can see there for first place. So it's all to play for here. But I think walking away is champion as well. Something like this, the first big spectacle as well, uh, is, uh, is quite the thing to take away after this weekend. So we're looking forward to that grand final tomorrow. But there's loads coming your way before that grand final. So just relax for a second. Calm down, everyone. Just calm down for a second. Uh, let's take a look, actually, um, at our brackets. Obviously, what the players that were involved, the players uh, that are still in the competition as well. Here, We'll take a look at our bracket. We have, of course, have a winner's bracket and we have a, a loser's bracket as well here. We'll take a look at those players and see exactly who is in the competition still. Um, looking forward to seeing uh, what your thoughts are as well here on how we got here in the first place. Um, Andy, start us off here. Uh, obviously, let's cast our mind back to the, those 16 that first enter the competition. Um, some shock results there. Yeah, so uh, first of all, before we did the results, there were some, some people who had uh, players as being favourites and they got drawn against each other. Um, so uh, Eliad had a really tough matchup against Diamad, uh, who's now progressed all the way to the, the you know, we'll see him later today. Uh, I had a, a, what I, is a, a tough draw against Artemis, that was a very challenging round one. Um, and then Crystal Hunter and Anorian, probably another from the Twitch community, those are names that people are going to know sure. uh, and, and, and respect and think about. So that was, was, round one was fantastic. It was, it was. And obviously, you know, as much as we wanted you to go to progress in the competition there, Andy, we, we do love you being here. <laughs> the entirety of this with us here on the desk too. Yeah, and obviously yeah. we saw our rounds here and the players started to kind of make their way down to the lower bracket as well here. But uh, we can see all the way through, um, we've got ourselves a, a final coming up, but the loser's bracket as well. This is last chance saloon for these players now left in the competition here. We have uh, two of these, uh, you can do Anarion versus Artemis and Kaljuk versus Hero as well coming later on here. But Jimmy, what I'm loving and seeing as well here, not only do we have, uh, you know, six different races that you know, came into this kind of final phase, but also five nationalities here as well. Yeah, incredible diversity and, you know, very surprising. We definitely expect a lot of Underworld and for only one of those to have made it the final six is pretty surprising. And uh, there is there is a strong Spanish, you know, force in Blood Bowl and it's, it's not surprising to see them, you know, two of those guys in there playing each other now, interestingly. Yeah. Do I, do, dare I ask predictions, Andy? Do I, do, would you, would you, at this point, would you predict well, who you think is going to go to that all the way? Well, as long as you don't ask Jimmy what the predictions are, we'll be fine, right? Yeah, the, we'll be doing that. Yeah. No, no Jimmy so, predictions whatsoever, please. So, so in the beginning of the two rounds ago, I said Anorian uh, or Chunter were going to get through, Chris Lunter. 
but I yeah, it now there's only one left. So I'm going to stick double down on the Inarian thing, but as I'm going to have two, my other one, I can see Strider possibly going all the way, especially with the racial matchups that he's been given. So uh, Strider's a, a good favourite for me as well now. Okay, I mean, Jimmy, well, I'm, I'm going to ask you anyway, who do you think will go all the way? <laughs> I agree with Strider. I agree with Strider, yeah. I, 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 I picked Strider to come through the loser's bracket, funnily enough, in my, like, you know, first prediction. And now it looks like he's coming through, the, you know, a good chance of coming through the winner's bracket. So, yeah, I'm, I'm sticking with Strider. Okay, exciting. Of course, you're, you're, you're watching at home very shortly here. What's going to happen in our winner's bracket final, which is obviously Diomed versus Strider. Uh, that's the first matchup. Uh, the winner of that progressing through to the grand final tomorrow. The player who loses that match will go down into the lower bracket and compete still for a chance in this competition here. Uh, should we look at their lineups, see exactly what they're bringing to the table here as well? Let's have a look and see exactly um, how uh, they are going to be uh, featuring, what, what teams they're bringing together for us here uh, on this Blood Bowl 3 season finals as well here. And uh, yeah, I think race plays an important part here, doesn't it, as well? Andy. Yeah. I think that's a that's a big factor uh, going into this. It, it absolutely is. Uh, looking at Diomed's roster, which we will you know, bring up in a second or two, uh, I think that his his, uh, his skill picks were actually just better than mine. Um, and I looked at it a little bit with jealousy once I'd saw it. Thought, <laughs> yeah, I should, should have done that definitely. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's good for four guard biggins, hasn't he? That's what he's gone for. You know, a lot of people. You know, everyone obviously took four biggins, but uh, Diomed went with four guard biggins, and it was a really good choice. You know, the the the. They use that strength, and then they've got the blitzers to go and hunt the other, the other, the other teams with a mighty blow on the tackle. Mm -hmm. So he just went all guard, big guns. Great, great plan from Diamond. That's right. I mean, I mean, for you guys at home as well here, um, you may be completely always aware that there could be completely brand new viewers watching Blood Bowl for the first time here. Obviously, seasoned veterans we know there as well in the community. Uh, you guys, make sure to get as involved in this as possible. Let us know in the chat as well who you think is going all the way. Your predictions as well here. But um, Andy, a great opportunity as well for I guess for newer players to kind of see what the kind of the creme de la creme of Blood Bowl talent they're getting up to and how they're managing to get to the likes of season finals. I, th I think it also shows you how to develop teams as well um, because a lot, of, a lot of new people will be thinking about, I've played game one, I've now got some potential level ups, but I don't know what to take. So this gives you that idea of like not only how to play it, but what to progress your team with as well. And, and if you're watching at home, do put something in chat. We can see it. We will respond to you. Yeah, we're watching every single comment. We love that. Yeah. We're, we, we can't we can't get enough of that chat. So, I mean, I, I, and last week as well, in that kind of like first weekend, I think the engagement as well online from you guys was absolutely brilliant, wasn't it, Jim? We, we were having a lot. Of, we were talking about some bizarre things across the course <laughs> of that weekend, but we had a lot of fun doing so as well. Yeah, it was a great weekend. Yeah, great weekend. Great for the community. Great to see just absolutely fantastic stuff. Was fantastic indeed. Uh, let's take a look then at the teams in this first matchup coming your way here on the Super Saturday. Here, let's first look at uh, we have a uh, Diomed's lineup here, and he is bringing Orcs to the party here, Andy, and uh, it's looking pretty strong. Yeah, as, as Jimmy's just alluded to, they got the four guard biggins at the top, uh, give him a real base that, that people are going to really struggle to move around. You stick those two players together, and then suddenly whatever you, you're fighting into really is struggling to hit you back. And then you've got the tackle blitzer and the mighty blow blitzer to go and hunt stuff down. And I think in this matchup particularly, uh, DMA will be trying to find the skinks and, and, and get at them. The mighty blow blitzer will probably be targeting Saurus for the first few turns. And then if he can get at skinks, he will do. The, the two unskilled blitzers then have free license to go and do whatever he likes with the thrower, uh, picking the ball up and carrying it. Uh, and then he's got an apothecary to round the roster out. So yeah, a very strong roster. Very strong. Yeah, very, very strong. Interesting, like, uh, in the matchup between Lizards and Orcs, you want to, like, isolate Blitzers onto your Saurus. And and you want, like, the Black, the Biggins, not Black Orcs anymore, Biggins, <laughs> to, like, you want those to be the free ones that can hit Skinks because they haven't got a block. So it's, it's that's that's the tension in the match is, is where the Saurus go and what they what they pick up on. And, and obviously, he, with the Guard Biggins, he really wants them jammed into the Saurus. So it's, that's, it's going to be interesting to see how they play it. It is indeed. Uh, let's have a look at Strider as well here, Strider's lineup. And of course, we've talked so much about uh, Lizards in the last uh, couple of weeks as well and how strong they are this season, Andy. Um, and Strider is, you know, has has, has, has strode through uh, the competition. I mean, I'm so sorry, that was terrible. Has, so yeah, but he's strided through the competition up to this point here and in a good position going into this. But Lizard, just, they, they just seem such a strong race to, if you can harness them and their skill set, then I think uh, Strider, you know, has every chance here of going through the grand finals. Yeah, absolutely. And, and looking at the skills, like, it doesn't seem very exciting. He's just got six, six block across all the strength four uh, blockers. But wow, what a wall that gives you. And it gives you the ability to just be able to fight, pick your fights wherever you want to go. The, the strong things being movement six is incredible. And then he's got movement eight, movement seven skinks for, for just running around and, and picking the ball up. This is going to be a real force to stop. Real problem. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, interestingly, the, all three lizards that qualified for the finals from the play-in play-ins they all took this exact roster so this this is put to bed i guess all doubt over which is the best lizard man roster um the interesting thing is the the re-rolls right they could have gone three re-rolls but they 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 all went the two re-rolls and then the chameleon skink gives them a free chance to catch the kickoff which could replace a re-roll anyway and then gives them the 12th player so yeah very 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 solid and you know the, the seven strong boys is just such a pain to deal with for literally every team even even these orcs i think it'll be difficult we saw, we saw, uh, you know, last weekend. I mean, all of our players that have competed, the 16 that started in this uh, competition last weekend, uh, have all been valiant in their efforts to try and get all this way. But looking at the two, the two players are obviously the community that the players that are going to play later on. We'll be watching this game. I have no doubt at all here. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, the two players, I guess dare we say, is the lizard men are they looking at thinking we'd rather we'd, we'd rather they don't go through down to the lower bracket because it's like a cat amongst the pigeons. It could just be very yeah. dangerous comparatively to orcs. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think, I think both coaches would find that the loser's bracket, it depends on the underworld. The, 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 the unknown quantity of arts underworld is the, is the danger component, I think. I think that's the, the, the matchup nobody wants uh, because they're so strong in this format. Um, but you just want to get this done, don't you? Get through today. Be done. <laughs> yeah. Put your feet up. Yeah. Yeah, you just want to win every game. You know, at the end of the day, if in the loser's bracket, you don't want to be in the loser's bracket and everyone in the loser's bracket, they're just fighting for their lives every game, aren't they? It's just whatever it takes and it doesn't really matter if it's orcs or lizards you've just got to you just got to do what you do yeah well, we saw we saw i mean we talked about fatigue last week as well like players having to you know and again the players are fantastically scheduling matches to kind of go, go with the broadcast and such as well but fatigue plays an important part these games can you know, particularly with overtime they can go quite a long you know quite a long duration um as you mentioned that like, the last thing you want is to really have a game that kind of draws out and then you know and to, you want to go through straight to the grand finals the last thing you want to do is play multiple times and kind of and, and wake yourself out ultimately yeah and i, I experienced that last weekend uh, played two games pretty much back to back, and it is really hard, especially if they go to overtime. So it, it, just get it done today, and no, neither coaches want to go in. Um, and I, I think of the two coaches here, I think Strider's probably got a slight edge. Um, so we'll see. I think, but I, I'd play at 55-45. That's, that's my prediction. Strider, but only just. Okay. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd probably go about the same same kind of percentages. Uh, Strider, of course, has the tabletop pedigree, but Diamed has been really playing really well recently. He played really well in ladder. He was he was top of ladder for most of the season, and and you know he's just a, he's a great player, playing great with a good team. But I think the racial matchup does swing it in Strider's favour. Yeah, interesting. And again, we want you guys to let us know who you think is going to go the way here. Who's going to go through to grand finals? Will it be Diamed or Strider? We're waiting for the game to commence very soon. It's coming your way here. We have ourselves four different matchups today. They're all best of ones here as well. Tomorrow, our grand final is going to be a best of three. I mean, best of threes. I mean, that is that is that is grueling, and that's a that's, that is a grueling way to. But I guess you have to go through it to get to the end to be the grand final champion. Yeah, the the, the one thing that I think is going to be even though. That, that both coaches will be playing that at the same time. But the advantage is going to have been that the person who's come through the loser's bracket has got to play at an another game that day. So, yeah, you, you absolutely, there's an extra ad added incentive here. You, you get an easier tomorrow if you can get it done today. Get it done. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's it. There's not much to think about for them. They've just got to try and win, haven't they? And uh, just give their all. But yeah, best of three is really interesting. Like, it's not something that we see in Blood Bowl almost ever, is it? No. Certainly not on tabletop and not really online. But I think I can think of one online tournament where there was a best of three and that was Dio with the dome. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and pretty much no one else does it. So that's going to be really interesting to see. A best of a best of three, yeah. I'm looking forward to that as well. I mean, obviously, we talked about that again last weekend. Um, the fact that we have uh, players here who, I mean, we've got this this amazing studio. I mean, look at this. This is, this is incredible. Like, we've, we've ele everything's been elevated. We walked in here this morning and just went, this is unbelievable. This is this is amazing. Um, so I think the players as well. I mean, the opportunity to I guess to kind of see the kind of leveling up of the of the production, and everything. This is a we talk about pressure in situations, but I mean, there's there, is there any added pressure? Do you think knowing that kind of the scale's growing and the game kind of like the the presentation of it as well is? I, I think it's interesting to see whether or not the coaches can deal with that best of three. Um, what will happen. Yeah. So, oh, we've got a game. Yeah, we have. We have, indeed. Uh, folks, we have got Diamond versus Strider. It is kicking off right here, right now. Who will be the victor? Let us know in the chat. Whoever wins this goes through to Grand Finals tomorrow. For now, it's over to Andy Davo and Jimmy Fantastic. Thank you very much, Adam. Yep, thanks very much. Here we are. Um, Diamond won the toss, chose to receive. And it uh, looks like Strider is just setting up in the basic rule of five here. In interesting. No nothing, uh, nothing special planned. 
Uh, obviously, the chameleon skink on the bench, it's only really on offense, right? For the free catch chance. It's its just worse than a skink most <laughs> of the time. Yeah. Um, interesting for a positional. But, it, you know, that, that, that free catch chance is good, isn't it? The uh, On the ball, pretty useful. Um, what... Well, I find, you know, using lizard men, one of the few ways you can lose a game is by failing the pickup repeatedly. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, so that free four plus is really nice a lot of the time, and, and just protecting against blitzers, all sorts of things. It's a, it's a good, good thing to help with the uh, stabilization phase. Yeah, w would you like? You see the orcs here; they're going for pretty much going for the damage and trying to hit them. Would you go for trying to uh, anti blitz because the skinks can get through? Would you go for a, an anti blitz setup or not? It's an interesting. That's a super interesting point, Andy. <laughs> um, I, 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 I guess not so much I, because you've got the sure hands. I guess like, what I would do is I would personally just leave the tackler back as a reactive piece and and then pile in and fight them. So this is the problem that everyone has against lizard men, isn't it? Just everybody, every single team has against lizard men. You have to commit to the LOS to to win the fight against lizard men. They've they've got seven the seven strong boys. You have to commit to, to win that fight. And if you can't win that fight, then you'll just lose. So you have to you have to pile in and fight that. So you necessarily leave yourself weak to a blitz. So yeah, I think he has to leave himself weak to a blitz here, um, and just trust that Mr. Throwback back here, skillless. Um, but you know, if he's getting hit by skinks, that's not such a big deal. Um, rely on him, and I, I personally would rely on a tackler to yeah. to protect. Yeah, it, I was looking at this thinking he was going to block. Um, as we're looking at it here from left to to right it looks like he's going to go right to left um but he's going to do he's going to commit the mighty blow and he's probably going to commit the tackle here uh very early on i, I don't like committing the mighty blow you may as well leave it on the line of scrimmage and then you can try and get hits with it yeah i'm bam i'm bamboozled because neither the mighty like not both of them aren't blitzing right the tackle yeah. and the mighty so yeah i don't understand why the tackle is is out on the edge uh, very blitzable in case of a blitz result and yeah now he's coming back to protect the ball a bit Where, where's it gone oh right <laughs> yeah yeah it seems it seems interesting that it's not not what i would have done <laughs> like i think just start him here and then you've got you've got a bit of cover as well right yeah yeah absolutely but, um, so it looks like he's just going to try and do a mighty blow blitz which you know, it would have been a big commitment. He he could have like uh, rushed to hit a skink on first turn, right? Yeah. But that, then then of course that does sell your tackle down the river, and he's just going to get, you know, man for man marked by a Saurus out of the game turn one. So he was never going to blitz with a tackler, I don't think. So. No. Now, he, now, do, do you take the blocks here, or do you want to take the, the the go for the pickup? Blocks, blocks. You have to block. Because you've got to win the fight. Yeah, you have to. But you, if you let Saurus get on top of you, you're just going to have a bad, bad time. <laughs> so you have to keep, you have to keep plugging the guards, you know, keep these guys locked down as much as possible. If you can lock the LOS down, he's got half a chance. Yeah. I think he could, he, he, the lizard counter here is he can actually chain at the moment one of those Saurus out, the, the last one that's three in front of the Crocs. If you blitz the line orc um, that is closer to the Crocs, You've got a T-shape and you've got a box. You can actually push one of your Sauruses out and give yourself that player back straight away. Yes. Um, yeah. uh, Diamond, I, I think, should take the guard, or, uh, guard big and that hasn't moved. You can move it one square to the left to take that out, that chain push out. Hmm. But he didn't do it. <laughs> so let's see if he goes for it. Because there's nothing exciting to blitz this turn. You're either blitzing a guard big and for me uh, or you're freeing up a Saurus. I, I like the freeing up the Saurus. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. It's like it's it's obviously not. It, you'd rather remove the guard, biggin, but uh, yeah, that that chain is very much the play you should be making. But I think you move this guy over. You could even have brought in one of the other biggins. I wouldn't have minded just really trying to monster this line. Yeah. But yeah, that was a good that was a good spot, Andy. Yeah, but this this formation is uh, a bit tricky. And he's going for it. So do you chain the mighty blowout here now? Oh. Oh. No, no, you don't, Jimmy. You you do that. I guess it gets him off the off the guard, biggin. But it's not. Wow. Yeah. I I could have seen an argument with that Crocs just going and marking the two guard biggins and just just piling into it a little bit. Because I I always like going all in or all out. Yeah, yeah. We've got the dreaded half mans. The thing with uh, lizards, of course, is. You know, they, they can fight you with only seven players. Yeah. So these four can just lurk. And then if they get the chance to do anything, they can then commit, right? Yeah. 
He's left. I mean, the tackle blitzer can hit skink here, if, as long as you get the Saurus over in the in in front of it. But I suppose he's he's made it pretty challenging to get all the hits off. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not that it, it's not that challenging to uh, hit a lot of guys here. Honestly, you can hit. You can get four knockdowns. You can get probably can't get five knockdowns, but I think it's relatively easy to get four. Yeah. Ooh. Obviously, the mighty blow being the most important protects him from the Croxagore counter punch and gets a removal. KO. Yeah. That's nice. I, I, I would like to see him move the ball next. Apo. Apo. He brings, yeah. Strider brings out the Apo. It is pretty much the perfect time to use an Apo, right? Turn two. Um, turn turn one or two of the half. Uh, getting that extra lizard man for the whole drive is really important. Saurus. Yeah, yeah. So he's got the two dice with block in the middle, which I presume he's going to take. Yeah, do this punch first, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then you've got the two dice with the big one. And then you can work out where you're going to put your blitz. And maybe maybe do a safe move first. Maybe move one of these guard big ones over. Yeah, just pick them both up and drag them across one, maybe. Yeah. I don't mind splitting them. I think I would just, uh, I think I would just move this guy to here. But then, where is the blitz coming? Is is the question, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, maybe he's going <laughs> to blitz the Saurus. Yeah. How far back is the? Just sorry. How far back is the ball from this? You can um, just see it. At the, uh, it's, at just, the, it it's there. You can see the the beam of light. Yeah, it's quite far back. So I thought, you know, try and focus on the game. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he is he is hanging back, and you know, he's he's not in range of the skinks. But um, <laughs> okay, well, well sort he's, of. In, he's, he's sort of not in range. Like, there's a lot in the way of these three. But yeah, he is technically in the range of this one. But these three, he's not in the range of, right? Because there's all these stuff in the way. Yeah. So, I think, I think, while technically he may be in range, <laughs> he's not actually in range. There's no path through, is there? Um, no. There's no way to blitz either of these easily, and and create a easy way through. Lads. So. Let me ask you. Let me ask you a, a, one of the most simplistic questions ever. But I'm gonna. I'm gonna ask you anyway. Right. Okay, it's a safe space for me, right? This is a safe place. Absolutely, we're in a safe place. Do you prefer? Is that personal preference whether you receive or kick the ball from the get-go? Would you? Would you rather be the receiver of the second half or the first half? Do you? Do you prefer in any which way? It doesn't matter. Or is it kind of all down to down to preference? So, in this particular format of the <gasps> season final, oh wow, that was a huge dodge fail into a Kaz. Uh, does not use the apothecary. Um, so gr great basing by Strider last turn there. You know the half man's. It got <laughs> you know it got half of his guys knocked down. But actually, <laughs> he's used an apple and he's removed a, a lineman from it. Um, in this format, we have the overtime. So Andy's you know a tabletop specialist if you like, uh, if anything. And that that changes a lot in here because with the overtime aspect, that removes pretty much all nuance and doubt from whether to kick or mm -hmm. receive, and you always receive. Yep. Get your drive done, and then you see what happens in the second half. The, the, what happens when you receive, you have to use your rerolls to get your drive done. On, on defense, you have the opportunity to maybe not use all of your rerolls to try and stop it and save your rerolls for overtime, whereas they just have the offense has to sell out and use their rerolls on offense. Yeah. Okay. So I would say always receive in this. Absolutely yeah. no doubt. No yeah. exceptions. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. Just Thank that. you. I thought, I thought I'd just, just ask. I was curious. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good question. But yes, I, he's absolutely right. Yeah, there's some subtleties in tabletop where you, you, you also this we've got comparatively skilled coaches mm -hmm. um in tabletop you know you could feel you had a huge coach advantage so you'd want to kick first and then see if you're one nil up see if you can go for two nil for touchdown difference tiebreakers yeah sure see, see you know see if you can go for the will uh, go for the win separately and stuff like this so there's mm -hmm. there's lots of things that could happen there that was really nice. He's just chained into the mighty blow, which you presume he's then going to stick a skink on the left hand side, a Saurus on the right hand side, and take the three dice. Really nice. Yep. Yep. So that setup looked a bit weird, didn't it, last turn with the Crocs on one side and that chain push? But now we see Strider was thinking ahead, and that's why he chained him out so he could punch him back into the Crocs and get the hit on the mighty blow guy. Three dice. Follow. Keep the pressure. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Really nice from Strider. And what you talked about in the intro in terms of trying to get the Saurus onto the blitzers. Look at the, there's got two blitzers already <laughs> pinned down. Yeah, um, and all the big ones, are, none of them are on Saurus. Yeah. Oh, sorry, not even just those three, all four big ones, not one of them are contacted by Saurus. And the blitzers, not only are they contacted, um, they're actually... <laughs> they're stuck. <laughs> yeah, half of them are on the ground. 
So yeah, this is problematic for Diamond. And they've, they've even got a, a Saurus pressure as well. Wow. And the, the throwers really went out of range of these skinks last turn. Yeah. He's, he's got to connect this up now. Like, yeah. And, and actually, as, as, as I've played Orcs during this tournament, I know that the deep kicks are the ones where I've struggled on my offensive drives. Going backwards on a, a drive to turn it into a turn three deep kick, yeah, he's gonna have a he's gonna have a real challenge on his hands here to get this forward and score now. I'd... Yeah, when I said he was out of range of the skinks, uh, what, what what kind of what I meant was he he has to be at the outer range of the skinks because otherwise he's too far back. And he, he did move them, he moved it back, didn't he? And he actually yeah. he did move himself completely out of range. But I think that was a mistake. I like being just inside their range and thinking, well, I'm out of range, you know, yeah. because not, but by actually going out of range, he's he's left himself open to. I mean, this is this is brutal. All he can do is stand these guys up. He can't generate hits here. And because he can't generate hits here, well, then he's got to hit this guy, right? Or at least base him or double base him. Then there's a gaping hole in the middle. This is real, real problems for Diamed already, turn three. Yeah, I, I'd like to potentially, uh, depending on quite how far he needs to root to throw, this this could even be go for it from the ball carrier, turn three, just to get it back into uh, some form of safety. Yeah, I've really got no idea where where that safety is or how it's achieved. <laughs> like, double base this Saurus maybe, or single base the Saurus? I mean, there's no cage, is there? No. There's absolutely no cage getting made you, for this throw. You've got to take... I'd, I'd go... Tackle guy goes... Oh, okay. Never mind. So I'd go and tackle guy goes one to the left of where he was. So now the sideline's safe. You run the ball towards that area and then you can screen that Saurus. Yeah. But he's going for something else. Maybe he's just going to stand here. This is kind of a cage, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So it's go for it into there. Not even a go for it. Wow. Speedy. Speedy Mr. Throw. And of course, but now you've got a cage in your own half, yeah. ready to be assaulted on all sides by Saurus. Yeah, this is invi yeah. It, I say inviting pressure. It, it, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm nervous now. Yeah. Do you instead of dodging the final blitzer off here, do you take two dice uphill on the Crocs? Always, always. Because I don't want to eat the mighty blow hit on the return. Yeah, it's so it's so good. Uphill, uphilling big guys is so good now. That's I guess that's one of the more subtle nerfs to lizard men. Is the is the uphilling big guys is so much stronger now, and I think this was a mistake to not uphill it. Really, mm. I, I I guess you can argue that you know Strider could like base the ball with a Crocs or something, but I'm I, I'm uphilling uphilling big guys all day. These <laughs> days. We've noticed all weekend. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a great strike. You know, like it it was already a decent <laughs> prospect, uh, like mathematically, positionally to do it. The problem was. If you know you're, t you're eating the mighty blow hit, and that made it just terrible attritionally, so you, you never wanted to do it because of the mighty blow factor. Now that now that there's no mighty blow on on their turn, it's 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 just free reign to uphill these guys. Yeah. The moment he starts getting the the, the guard biggins split out like this, where they're isolated, they're not really doing very much having guard. You'd much rather just had block at this point, and and the lizard coach is just gonna isolate, control the field. Yeah, I didn't like the LOS. Honestly, I didn't like the LOS from Diamed. The, the guard biggins weren't there on the LOS. And I get that he doesn't want to block with them too much because they're blockless blocks and it, it'll lose rerolls. But that's that's where you need the biggins. You need the biggins on the Saurus dominating them with guard. Yeah. Yeah, it's six versus four. And the, the, the leveler, if it, it at all, is, is the guard, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, and this is... This is... Uh, oh. <laughs> I don't yeah. I don't know how he's going to bring it back. Um it's going to involve a lot of dice rolling probably. <laughs> yeah, this is It's actually recovered from like uh, the previous turn, right? Only one player on the ground. He's he's got a free 2D here. He's got a kind of obvious blitz over over this side and and move the ball up, but it's still it's still pretty a rough rough spot for Diamond. Yeah. When it comes down to the uh, the defensive, like lineup, fellas, when it, you just just you know, let's say when you're you're originally put it, you're putting your um, your team in certain positions, would you say that, for instance, if you're a lizard man, let's say for instance for a second that you're um yeah you're 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 a strider there, and you're thinking, okay, I'm up against orcs here. Do I have a certain defensive lineup to counter 
act the way that, which orcs tend to set up, or am I have I got the the way in which I set up carte blanche across every single race, regardless of what they chuck at me? This is the way that I set up. So, so for me, I think yeah, the, the the reason that this setup or the, the reason that this match is going a little bit wrong for the orcs is because they're so narrow, they're so compact. So what the lizards have managed to do is go round both sides and create like a semicircle uh, around them and it's controlling the field. So yeah, to answer your question, do all, what do you want to be doing? It is actually kind of semi-generic. You want to be going wider where possible mm -hmm. and the more width you create, the more options you're creating for yourself, like the ball can go left, right or maybe central. If you're wide and you're really compact, you can't even get through the wall. You're going nowhere. Yeah. And that's what we're talking about here is the, is the problems of, of getting through this. Yeah, it's a bit like 300, isn't it? You know, like by, by you know, the narrow pass, they just can't fight through the, 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 the wall in front of them. But, but yeah, also getting outflanked. Um, what a film, by the way. What a <laughs> film. What a film. <laughs> Great movie. But yeah, all specific, I think the specific game plan from both of them had to be about the Saurus and the Biggins. That's what it was all about. And, and I, I feel like Diamond that's, let that slip away at first. He's maybe bringing that back, but it's it's late in the drive, and now how is he going to get through this team? You know, now it's very easy for Strider to, you know, he's been he's been just fighting and warring so far, but now it's going to be very easy for him to screen off at this point, right? Mm. To, to turn five for Diamond about to come up. I mean, you can see the Skinks, uh, up, you know, the top uh, top of the screen here, they're kind of screening now. Very easy for them to just screen off the whole the, the whole field essentially. So. Um, It'll be interesting to see how much, you know, if he switches to pure screen or if he thinks he can he can finish this half 1-0 up, Strider. Yeah, what, what, what he's also doing really well, Strider, is managing to chain hits, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's, the, that's the second or third time he's chained someone into someone else, generated another hit. And this yep. potentially, if this next hit's a pow, where he's going to block next to the crocs to go or push down, you push the mighty blow out of the way, you can then have another two dice uh, on the guard big one, and yep. that's your beachhead that's just collapsed. So yep. on turn five, when you've got to be thinking about where am I going to break through, mm -hmm. you'll be spending turn five thinking about, oh dear, why has this gone all horribly, horribly wrong? Yeah. And if he pushed, he could have he could have also just pushed him into there, right? And then got a yeah. got another two D at the at the blitzer, and then a one D on the last big one. So yeah, very very good, very good chaining hits from from Strider for sure. Yeah, I would like to see him do a couple of yeah non dice roll moves. We'll we'll call them safe moves. We'll coin that as a we'll phrase. Call them safe moves. Yeah. Well, safe moves is good. Safe moves first. That's a that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's pretty obvious that the orcs will be going to go. Um, oh, only a stun. Only a stun. Uh, they're going to be going across as we look at it up to the top right. Yeah, bringing that saurus round the side there to just prevent that. It's absolutely the way forward. Yep. Yeah, lovely move. Nice. So yeah, not not the traditional screen, right? It's just just a wall of strength. And and the the problem is it's really easy for him to transition to a screen if he has to. So sure, I think honestly now turn five for Diamond the way this position the the biggins absolutely dominated here by the Crocs and stuff, standing these players up. I think he's just thinking how do I get out of this at nil nil. <laughs> I yeah. think that yeah, was his yeah, yeah. Well, I was going to ask is that kind of like does that become the game plan rather than kind of I need to try and score just preventing the turnover and losing you know, going one zero down into the half. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I think, so. I think so, and he's just started standing players up just to tie people up. I think this is the yeah. turn where what we're going to see next is he will commit. He's going to break round to that right uh, to the right-hand flank next, and then it'll just become a pocket of four or five orcs versus probably six or seven lizards, and mm. can you can you get through? I, I would have followed that because you just want to tie up another player here. I think I think he might not move. I think he's not going to move. I think he's going to blitz this guy with a mighty blow. And then drop back and and just still cage and give up on the score. It's something you have to do sometimes. Give up on the score and uh... if you if you don't move, you get you are giving the score up. I think. But yeah. you're right. I think he's going to take that line of play. I would go after the the. Oh, yeah. Maybe not. Yeah. Maybe he's coming up this way. This has to be a pow. I mean, this is the decision he has to make, right? Like, and it, it it's totally fair, I think, to give up on the score. Um, you've got a movement five ball carrier, <laughs> and you're under severe pressure versus a very good coach. So, I, I, I'm all for giving up drive sometimes. Give up sometimes, <laughs> as, the, <laughs> as the great Tony plays poorly says. Um, and yeah, it's you, you do have to sometimes because if you don't give up, like you know, if you don't just try and protect the protect the ball 
and, and try and come out nil nil, there's more chance of you going yeah. one nil down, isn't there? Like, okay, you, this might give you a five percent chance to go and one nil up, but if it raises uh, striders up from five percent to twenty percent to go one nil up, then what, what you're saying, Jimmy, is sometimes you need to chuck the towel in to grow. Yes, I think, yes. I think Rocky said that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> in a roundabout way. Um, yeah. But no, I, I, I think you. I mean, I think I guess it's a constant learning curve as well. Every 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 match you play, you're you're constantly learning and developing and finding new ways out of certain situations. And I think you're right. You take into account the fact that of the quality of these coaches now, they're all going to have a gazillion tricks, you know, up their sleeves to ensure they get uh, ahead. The, there's there's possibly two dice on the ball here. Now it's a bit convoluted and it's a <laughs> ginormous chain push. So I'm sure Chunt has seen it, but the rest of us, maybe not. Um, so if we take the, the board position uh, and fill in the square uh, to, uh, he's, he's, already, he's already gone a different route. Uh, but I was think, looking at seeing whether you could just chain push the Saurus that's two squares diagonally away from the ball carrier. If you can push that uh, down to where the guard biggin is and then you blitz that away, you actually then can, with the assist that can run around from the skink, you can get two dice on the ball. It, yeah, it, it's tricky, and 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 the, th the thing you've got to assess is actually if I'm already ahead here, do I need to be rolling dice where I'm making a three plus early in the turn, which could go wrong, or do I just play safe? And and so, the right move might be to to not take that take that two dice on the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, the right move is probably just to blitz the tackle blitzer on the on the right hand side, prevent that from moving, and know you have got the nil nil, and just believe in yourself that you will score, um, going into your half. Yeah, that's the, it's a big problem, isn't it? Trap sacks, uh, as, as Dio calls them, or space cadetting, as some people call it, uh, <laughs> when you leave a leave a chance to hit to you know hit the ball, and he, he didn't really hit that. You know that was a good spot by Andy, um, but yeah, you shouldn't always go for the ball, and you know like uh, this is a stronger a guaranteed stronger position, isn't it? Yeah. Whereas the it was a riskier uh, potential position by going for the ball sack. Oh, he's going to change something, potentially. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. Still not committing the skinks. Like, this is crazy, right? That he's just doing this with seven players. <laughs> yeah, seven versus 11. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's lizards. Like, it's no problem for them <laughs> to play seven versus 11 most of the game. <laughs> That's lizards. Four, yeah, these four guys in reserve, any any time, and you know, and this is the, this is why protecting your protecting the nil nil is is a very strong option because if you break now, how on earth do you stop these kings coming in and getting you? Mm. Like just how? I, I, I don't see any way of doing it. Yeah, I, I don't I don't see how you're gonna he's gonna solve this for the score. almost impossible doesn't it because he'd have to be on the halfway line with the ball with, with blitzes not even the ball with blitzes <laughs> yeah. because the ball's now out of range yeah yeah so. <laughs> mr throw is at least has to do a, a rush with continuous forward movement which is ludicrous he has to block this guy and he has to blitz somebody else right to get forward so it's yeah this is almost a dead drive trying to get out in nil nil for diamond the the only way he's he, the strider's left a space is if oh right so the first thing is a power here you blitz the skink that's just in front of where you, oh yeah you blitz the skink here and then you, you've got to roll a, a pow and if you can roll the pow and you hadn't put that player there you might have got through but he's he's going in a totally different direction I think he's I think you're right he's going for the, the just don't concede yeah I think that's stronger you know people. People yep. might call it, you know, negative or <laughs> or something, but, you know, you've got to know where you beat, right? And this is essentially, I guess this is like parking the bus a little bit, isn't it? You know, the, yeah. the game's got away from him, so just, just hold out till the end of the half and at least you're not 1-0 down. Yeah. Jock says, I'm not sure I would have blocked in that direction. No, I would have blocked north and then I would have then chased that skink. By blocking in, in that direction, you couldn't possibly not get in your own way. Mm. But by doing it this way, you can like rotate around and blitz this skink with mighty blow, and then that that's like you know better better attrition because like how do you punch? Okay, you, could, you know he could have punched a different direction and he could have made this block, but how are you punching through here with yeah, like with 
three Tri players in the ball who can barely get past the skink. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he's getting the hit with Mighty Blow. This is good, right? This gives him... He could re-roll this, genuinely, with, with only two more turns after this. That could have been a re-roll. Yeah. Because uh, just try and get some attrition in for the second half. He's, he's got to step this... Step the Blitzer forward at least one, and I'd prefer him to be... Ooh. Oh, big and in to support with a GFI? No. Yeah, put it in. I would have liked the GFI, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think I'd have put the big and in, touching all three skinks, just got north of the other guard. Oh, big yeah. And, but, yeah. Um, but it does leave you a little bit open. I like the GFI. Uh, yeah. I guess this protects the ball better, right? Is the ball going to come here, maybe? Um... I guess he can go here. This this guy stuns, so the ball could go there. Maybe in, because there's a guard to protect it. Yeah. So one of these four, probably, for the ball. Maybe he's thinking about the GFI. The problem is because he hasn't moved the ball first. <laughs> uh, you know, this GFI gets really risky, doesn't it? Yeah. Do you think someone of Strider's character will always be... Even up to turn eight, thinking, I can push this, I can break this, I can score. Do you think he'll at some point go, do you know what? This is what it is. I, I, I think maybe maybe Strider being more tabletop, maybe will think more positively. Mm -hmm. And and will, 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 because you have to in tabletop. Mm. In tabletop, you have to win, and a draw is unacceptable always. If, you know, for <laughs> maybe not, not for like, you know, lesser lights, but for the likes of Strider and Andy, they have to win every game. There's, uh, if they go to a tournament and draw, then they're just wasting their time, you know, because they're going there to win. Yeah. And, and you don't win tournaments with draws, you win them with wins. <laughs> so, so, you know, <laughs> you'll risk the loss for the win every time on tabletop. Here, there's a lot to be said for the draw. You, you get to overtime and you can still win. So, It'll be interesting to see if Strider, you know, how much Strider adapts to that change, mm -hmm. or if his tabletop mentality, you know, might might come through, especially uh, with you know high high stress and uh, you know pressure and that. Maybe he will kind of revert to what he knows more, and maybe push for push for the win when maybe, you know, taking a step back and solidifying is good. This was good from Diamond though, wasn't it? It was actually yeah, pretty pretty strong turn, pretty strong turn. Um, there's a lot to react. It looks probably looks better than it is, because there's a lot to react from from Strider here, and you know, for in fact, he can uh, he can just hit this guy, can't he? Yeah, that, that's the blitz. The the, the the most concerning. No, no, I think this is the block, right? right? Ooh. And then you can blitz the ball. Ooh. So there's, there's a lot to react. <laughs> yeah. And by not taking the the two dice, which was on the left hand side of the Crocs. That's saying that he is looking at going and using those players proactively somewhere. Yeah, yeah? here we are. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm concerned for him about the, the the blitzer on the far left because it's being marked currently by just one skink. Yeah, this is classic Strider, right? He's he's rolling the dice first, and you know, <laughs> you know, it's been said that he doesn't make straight safe moves first, and this this Saurus could have gone round and, and stood in front of this guy. Yeah, I think he probably should have done. Wow! But now he gets to react, doesn't he? Now, if this goes in the crowd, uh, the he does. He does push on the sideline. <laughs> Doesn't go in the crowd. So now he can. But look at the skink. There's a skink that hasn't moved yet. <laughs> yeah. Three away from the ball, and then you go. So for me, I mark the blitzer that that could score. Uh, if you want to play defensively, yeah. if you want to play offensively, that Saurus comes around and. and does aggressive stuff. Yeah. I like. I like that. That's my, that's yeah. my play. Yeah, but that that should have happened if, if that ago. was a straight. Yeah, it should have happened. It, that should have happened start of the turn, right? Before he rolled any dice, he should have done that. If he wasn't going to go for this, like with this kind of crazy scatter, then uh, he probably should have. You know, he, he could have gone here. He could have been geified to a uh, rushed. Sorry to mark the tackler. It's not a bad shout, was it? Oh Ooh. wow! One in nine into Kaz. So they're both capped at eleven now. Yeah. Is there any KOs? I'm sure someone's been KO'd. There was, there was the Saurus was KO'd, but uh, Strider used his Apothecary. Instantly. Turn two. Turn two <laughs> KO. So he can he can get his way out. He can get out of this. Not easy, but he can get out of it. So the Tackle Blitzer being free means you can go up the sideline. And if you put the Guard Biggin in, you can make a, 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 a T-shaped box extravaganza. Uh, we're using the mighty blow, and you can you can get down the sideline here. This is not this is not a locked up safe score. No. Yep. 
yeah, this is this is it's not over. <laughs> yeah, guard big and where your cursor is, punches l left. The yeah, he's got. Other, his, oh, he's already yeah. st stood. He stood yeah. stood him up. Other guard, but yeah, to so that block there. If you get a pal, you can go and stand in front of the Crocs. Now you've got a, a big pile of people you can just push around, and then the tackle blitzer can blitz up the sideline. It, it, I wouldn't say it's easy, but considering you've just been sacked the turn before on turn six, yeah, I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's interesting, isn't it? Like I I think that was correct to move the source round there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I think it should have happened earlier. Right, so he's piling in. Chat, how are you guys thinking this is going? Like, what do you think? I've been reading a little bit of stuff, but no one's said, oh, I think this is what's going to happen next. Yeah. So he's now freed up the mighty blow. Yes, he's got to make a go for it, but now he's going to have two blitzes that can run down the side. Mm, interesting. I think I preferred the mighty blow hit. I guess oh, this, this frees this guy up, though, right? Yeah, by doing it yeah. that way, this frees this guy to come down the field as well. Actually, yeah, I like that more than the mighty blow hit. In fact, it doesn't have to go down this. It doesn't have to go down the flank, does he? You can actually, yeah, as, as Kalen's just said there, I think. Um, no, not as Kalen said. He just said two D stuff. But um, <laughs> uh, Jock say that you can then just push into the middle. I, I agree. I think the mighty blow hit on the skink on your way through cause a bit of like, you know, roadside damage. And uh, oh. oh, so he, he does declare the handoff. Gets the pick up. Makes the handoff. Yeah. I think I still think sideline is better because there's just less stuff to react. But I guess the both of these guys are down. It's not too bad to go through the middle. Mm. You could even go down here and get this punch off, right? Yep. Got uh, it a bunch of GFIs. You can you can get to make this hit and then still protect a little bit. So will he make all the GFIs for the hit? Yeah, he's going to. Oh, Ooh. not for the hit, just a GFI. Uh, rush, sorry. Rush. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> rush. <laughs> yeah, nice. Okay, so that's this is good. Tackle Blitz just hits the skink on his way past just to do some drive-by damage. The danger here is, well, not the danger. One of the dangers is the Crocs, isn't it? This is uh, yeah. all baseable by the Crocs. Yeah. So he's got to try to screen slash base him somehow. Yeah, the, ta the Tackle Blitz are... Has got to do is a screen here, hasn't it? One, two, three, four to hit the the skink, and then yeah, I think you probably just got to leave it. Oh, he's not blitzed. Yeah, yeah, just try and screen. The problem here is that you're not screening the crocs right because you can blitz one of these and then the crocs can get on the ball. So yeah, and and if it all fails, you've got five plus for two D on the ball. Yeah, yeah. I mean, good a good turn by by Diamond like. Really good, good couple of turns under a lot of pressure. Okay, there was the you know the two D on the ball last turn, but uh, he got a lot of stuff forward uh, in a very very tough spot, and now he's managed to give himself you know two scoring threats. Right, the tackler is a scoring threat, mm. and so he's got a secondary scoring threat. So that means it's hard to blitz the big one to put pressure on. You really want to blitz the tackler um, if you're not blitzing the ball, and if you're not blitzing the ball, then you're not blitzing the ball, and you should probably be blitzing the ball if you can. <laughs> In yeah. this situation, when he's going to score next turn, uh, lots of times you see people like make the safe move of blitzing, you know, like for instance, blitz this guy and then tag the ball or, or blitz the big in here and then try and get the Crocs tag. But, you know, if you even tagging with the Crocs, he's still about 75% of the score, which is. Yeah, bonkers, isn't it? Yeah, it's you're much better off doing your 55% uh, Saurus dodge and then hit, hitting the ball carry. It's surprising how how good that is. I, I, I'm, I'm genuinely sort of surprised to how well he's managed to turn this from a drive that we were both thinking, well, this is a bit ruined, and, and he's just turned it into, at the moment, a free score, pretty much. Yep. I mean, yes, the Lizards have still got some response left, but that's insane. Yeah. So he is blitzing the tackler, try to bring out, take out the second scoring threat. Yeah. Can the Crocs, with a, was it with a go for it, you can get directly in front of the ball, and yes. then you put the skinks, oh, you don't follow that up. No, the, oh, you can. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. just walk around it. It's fine. I, d I don't think you risk the GFI. I think you just, just stand and then screen with the skinks as well. Yeah. As, as good as the standing in directly, like the standing in front would be better. 
but it's such a risky GFI, isn't it? Yeah. Now you just put the skinks in a, a big line but behind that. Yeah. I think he sent it around because a one in nine failed dodge to pick up the ball because Strider had committed. Yeah, I think that's that's a fair point. If if Strider had made that ball pick up, this is a totally different drive. That's definitely true. Yep. But it was still good work getting in the position, wasn't it? Getting in there, putting his players in the right squares. Yeah. Uh, you know, he gave himself the chance to to get the, you know to get this, make this happen. Yeah. And this is, I mean, that's the right square for the skink, isn't it? If you if you dodge out, you'd rather dodge forward. So that stops him dodging forward. So he has to dodge laterally. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, double GFIs. This is what a four, three, two, two to score. Yeah. And now he needs the other, he's got to go and fetch that other skink. If he can, yeah. He does. Doesn't kill itself. Now the problem that he has is the uphill on the Crocs is actually pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. So I think that, that skink's not far in. Oh, I suppose it is far enough. I'd have put it two more forward. Like just carried on two more. Yeah. Because then you were saying you have to uphill the Crocs. Yeah. I think he does anyway. I think it's just the better. It's probably better odds anyway. Like it's probably just the right play to uphill the Crocs. It doesn't work. Wow. <laughs> like it's not, it's not terrible, right? It costs so, you a square of movement, and you're still on a four-three-two-two to score afterwards. So just that, one reroll is the problem. Oh uh, yeah, so you just yeah. If you roll a pile, then of course you walk through it. If you don't, then you're going to do four-three-two to score. Yeah. Four-three-two-two. Oh yes, because you because you've not moved. Yeah. Yeah, the, so yeah, the, if you pow, it's a, it's a, it's a three plus two two, and if you don't if you don't pow, then it's a four three two two. So it's still rough, like, but way way better than it was. And there's no no counter score, so he has got out of this nil nil diameter, this nightmare drive. <laughs> so I mean that that's a win. That is a win in itself. Yeah, and there's nothing else you want to do here, is there? Because yeah, the, the guard bigging on the halfway line could maybe throw a block, free up the lineman. But for me, that's just a one in nine to eat your reroll. It's not a good idea. It doesn't guarantee you a much safer path. It's just let's throw a load more dice. Yeah. Dodge into skink blitz is 33% much better off, says Puppet Justice. So you go, what? Justice, you're talking about five plus dodge onto the skink. So that's only got a 55% chance of working in the first place. Yeah. Then it's two dice where it's 75% to knock it yeah, down. That's what he does. Only gets the push, but I mean, he doesn't have to follow. Yeah, and now it's, so that's, that was 5-2-2. Two, two. So it was yeah. actually 5-2-2 two, two to just go that route, or it was two dice uphill, 4-3-2. Yeah. Mm. It's interesting. It's not... It's not uh it's not obvious I think with a reroll. I think if he had more rerolls like mo rolling more dice is generally better if you have a reroll. If he has two or three rerolls then I think the uphill is is way better. But yeah, perfect eight turn stall. <laughs> uh although I think using taunts and stuff brilliant. Wow, incredible. Great stuff from Diamond. I mean, that, that looked lost at one point, I would say. But yeah, I mean, one turn here from Stride. He's got both rerolls for the one turn. I can't believe he somehow still got both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was just he just played a safe defense, didn't he? Didn't get any bad dice. What's interesting is on, on his offense in the second half, this is why the receiving was crucial from yeah. Diamond. Strider has to use rerolls on, on offense if things go wrong. You know, he can't just go, ah, oh, well, you know, if, if he scores, so what? He has, to, like, he cannot risk, like, you know, failed pickups and stuff and, and like, double skulls that are crucial. So, like, there's a lot more pressure, I, I find, to use rerolls on offense than defense. So, and he, he's going to have to be doing it to stay in the game unless he can get the one turn here. Yeah. This is one of the better setups to stop a one turn, I, I think. 
because you're forcing the lizard coach to have to go and fill in squares using skinks. So there's a natural 10% every time it, it could go wrong just to see what would happen. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, Puppet Justice, he still has the chance if he rolled the push, right? There were still good odds. All he had to do was not skull on the uphill. So I think your math is a bit off. Actually, there, buddy. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> it's interesting. I think with three rerolls, I really preferred the the uphill and then like different contingency plan, plans. Mm -hmm. But with one reroll, the, the five plus dodge maybe was better. But limiting yourself to fifty percent hard cap, fifty fifty five percent is rough. Yeah, it, it would, I would I would have to I would have to work it out properly. And you're and you're almost certainly going to be using the reroll now because it's only one in three to not spend the reroll. So if you've only got the one that changes the rest of the math calculation as well. Um, yeah. So, I don't know. He did it, right? It worked. Cool. We'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> so he's using the whole method here, which, which isn't great. And all these guards, I mean, if these guards are making it an uphill anyway, you might as well do a skink dodge into a... Uh, you just fill in a square. Into a pound stuff, yeah. This is interesting. I mean, this is he's got lots of options with the skinks, right? He can do he can do like a rubbish version of an underworld touchdown. Um, don't know how how good Strider is at one turns because this is this is one of the uh, issues they have is there's no time bank on setups here, and now he's run out of time, so he's going to have to go with this. <laughs> so this is his setup. Yeah, and it's uh, oh deep kick. Oh, it's, well on the ball helps. Yeah. Oh, a blitz. Oh. A blitz does not help. <laughs> oh. Well, it helps Diamond. His tackle is over there, though. Maybe he should have, uh, you know, hung out Mr. Throat to dry. Yeah. So here, is it not just blitz? The, the crocs are gone. There's two skinks just above it. Just step up a couple of things in. Blitz one of those skinks. Push, chain push stuff backwards. Uh, and just, there you go. You can't do it. Yeah. Because that's what he's trying to do, right? For the whole method. I think this is probably toast now. Yeah. Two guard biggins here, and then blitz that skink. Oh, but then you can't chain the other one back. <laughs> but you yeah. could chain them across, and then that makes it hard for them, probably. So, I mean, you definitely want to hit a skink on three dice. Yeah. For sure. He's not doing it, though. Oh, he might be doing it. He might be doing it. Yeah, he could be hitting this this skink, couldn't he? He could be hitting Yeah, now. Yeah, so the other guard biggin steps next to it, and then the mighty bloke swings in for three dice. So he's moved three. This will be four. If you if you diamond, what you also don't don't want to do is give away too many hits because if some moment Strider can't score, oh, instead of having three hits, you're now getting five. It it it'll harm your opportunity for the second half. Yeah. Now, Adam, anything you've noticed about the first half that you think, you know, as as now someone coming into the game, are you thinking? Yeah, is this changing the way that you might have played slightly or you know, change the way you think about it at all? Oh, do you know what I was just now thinking about? Do you remember last week we were talking about the kind of like the different, we, we, took, we came up with Uber Blood Bowl, right? <laughs> okay, these kind of like, these kind of like, if you missed it last week, we were talking about kind of what if you had like a, these certain setups, new, like ch challenge based kind of like, you know, uh, things you had to kind of work your way through and how you get you out of certain situations. I was thinking about that situation there with Diomed versus um, Strider in that kind of like final moments there. And imagine if you had the same similar setup of Lizard Men and in Strider's situation, and you had like three or four turns to get yourself out of that situation to ensure that Diomed didn't score. And you could almost use like kind of like moments that happen in finals and kind of kind of translate that into kind of like yeah. play of the week. And you've got to try and get your way out of it and that kind of thing. And yeah. even Diomed could be like, oh, this week I chose this particular setup. Try and beat my kind of, you know, yeah. you know try and beat my, you know, my challenge. I love those kind of things. I think it would really work. I don't know. I think yeah. the community, you guys at home, let us know in the chat if you think that's the case. But I think really fun, like you have the Andy Davo week, Jimmy Fantastic week, where you, you create some a certain situation and uh, players got to try and get their way out of it. Maybe there's like kind of some kind of XP reward. I'm just I'm just spitballing. But I'm just <laughs> thinking about those kind of things. You know, I think it's really cool. So Yeah, now that you say that, I mean, that would be incredible, right? If like using the replay file, they just like, you know, Cyanide could somehow like say, you know, turn four on here this is where you take over you know now you're in exactly. diamond's shoes and what do you do yeah exactly. that'd be really cool i really like that i think it's really cool legend of total war does that for his total war games doesn't he you can play yeah, here's a replay file it's ruined go fix it and you try and give it to a good player to go fix <laughs> yeah. um, and somehow he always manages it 
Yeah, I like that a lot. I think you can learn a lot from that as well, though. I think you have those kind of situations. You can, yeah, I think you can learn naturally. Kind of, how do I get my weight? Because if there is a finite way that you can get out of it, it kind of almost incentivizes you to go. I, I can, I can break through this puzzle. I can break yeah, yeah. through this. The, I can do this. Yeah, the chat are sort of uh, alluding to this a little, little bit. Like, with, it's like chess puzzles. The problem with Blood Bowl is you can't fast forward it too many, uh, too far because every dice roll is well. What happens if you roll a push? Once you roll a power? Once you roll a skull? Right? Those three pathways mm -hmm. by the time you've gone forward four steps suddenly you've got a branch of a tree that could be 30 things wide yeah um, yeah it, it's it's tricky but it, it's, a, it's a great concept yeah um, i've got a question for you andy oh on a scale of one to ten how much do you appreciate the fact that i've just brought over the most enormous bowl of candy you've ever seen <laughs> this is on you know this is on i uh, uh <laughs> Diamond somehow <laughs> didn't didn't leave this uh, didn't end up in the strongest position. He actually took Made away from the side. Yeah, he took away. He moved Mr. Throw over here instead of moving Mr. Throw out on the out on the wing. And we've got the first block here that could have been a pow. Now this one has to be a push, which it is. Oh, that's one of his squares in. He probably should have. He probably should have passed just before doing this. Before the blitz, he probably should have passed. I think. He's got it. He's yeah. in. Like well, doesn't even matter. This is powers now. He just needs to not be both downs. Because the next one's uh, it pushes it behind the big one, and then yeah. the next one after that is I'm in. But look how far it is to throw. Is is the yeah. problem, isn't it? This, but yeah, he, you know, yeah, wants a power here effectively because it's a free power. <laughs> yeah, gets it. And the Crocs needs to not bonehead because he needs the assist for two dice. Yeah, correct. Yeah, he does need, he does need the Crocs. I wonder if he should have made the block with the Crocs. No, <laughs> disregard errata. <laughs> So this needs to be a power for... There we go. So now he's in a minimum of two tackle zones. Yeah, push him upright to make it a bit... Uh, I don't think it matters, really. No, it probably doesn't. No, he's got enough. He's got enough move. Right, here we go. We will come back to those candies. We will. <laughs> and not just any candies, chat. Sour candies. Oh, oh they're my jam. Oh, actually, outside is better because the, the ball could scatter out and then be thrown in two and he could catch it. Oh, wow. <laughs> So you want to be six squares away. That's the second break for passing. And then it's ten squares after that. Oh. Uh, that's not good enough. Mm. So they throw in a three, don't they? So it's threes, then fours, then fives. So he's probably looking for a five here. Yeah, probably oh, a it's five. It's probably yeah. a five. Yeah, it looks like a five. And he fails. Wildly inaccurate. He throws it behind him. <laughs> <laughs> classic. <laughs> Happens in Madden all the time. Li classic lizard bed. <laughs> throws it behind him. Classic. Yeah. Classic. Um... You must say GG, sir, Diamond. There was a situation yeah. there we thought, how is it, can he even sustain and not concede here and find and finds a way to score themselves? That is that is kudos to the player there to manage to do that. And now it's, I guess, all onus on Strider here to have to come back into this. Yep. And uh, and st and play for that, I guess, for overtime or play for a, a two in one half. That's even a, a doable thing. I yeah. think So I think we'll see he'll only score once and then we'll be fl uh, flipping this for overtime. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, we'll see. But possibly one of the greatest games of, of the final so far. I think that half from both coaches was, was yeah, very, yeah, very strong. Um, yeah, and I mean we've seen some we've seen some games as well where there's been an enormous amount of casualties, knockouts, you name it, and very few comparatively in this game. Yeah, yeah I think it's nice to see like not you know it's it's obviously fun, to, especially for Andy to see ten <laughs> casualties in one game. Well, but, I, uh... I think I'm thinking back to that first <laughs> round against Art. The, the Artemis match. I think about the you know that kind of first. Was it the first play of, of, of uh, the second half? Yeah. Things just capitulated very quickly. Yeah. I felt. Yeah. 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 Yeah, felt, yeah. 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 Thank you. My heart hurt in that moment. For you. So, so did mine. It was weird. We must be connected <laughs> somehow. I think we're twins. We're in this. We're yeah. We're, we're we're twins. I'm Danny DeVito, and you're on Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's the oh. difference. That's the difference. <laughs> wow. I'm the Danny to your to your Arnie. That's me. <laughs> we should get matching T-shirts and see if anyone notices. <laughs> Well, tomorrow, I will say the line. I'll be back. Ah, brilliant. I'd love that. It's uh, Next season. Yeah. What a film that was, by the way. Got a lot of time for twins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's nice to see a lot, lot of, you know, a lot more play in this one with uh, with that being evenly matched for the pretty much the whole half. It was pretty cool, uh, numbers-wise. <laughs> uh, lot, lots of good plays. Just shout out to the, the chat that's saying that this is a movie remake I want to see. I, <laughs> nice. I, I mean, that would be great. You could play the love interest, Jimmy. Oh, uh, yeah, maybe, yeah, I don't know how we'll make that work, but I think that could be a thing. Well, I mean, that's pretty obvious, right? You two are sitting there chilling. And I'll walk in and he'll <laughs> say, hey, want to take a shower? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> wow. Oh, that, that needs explaining because yeah, that's that out is, of context. That's got is, no context. Everyone's thinking, what, what just happened? <laughs> oh my gosh. Long story short, one of our one of our team arrived yesterday after a, after a long train ride, and uh, Andy, being being the lovely guy he is, is like, hey, do you want to grab a shower? Because he did it, the person just arrived, but it came across like. A very different way. A very different way it came across, and we all laughed a lot about him. Oh, so here we oh. go. This Ooh. is the thing, right? Failed pickup. Obviously, he's never going to re-roll that. He's got good cover. Yeah. Um, bit of a bobble box, right? That one guy directly in front. Um, could have could have been really bad for him, but really unlikely to be really bad for him. But you know, next turn he's going to have to re-roll the pickup probably, because I guess I guess there's going to be a bunch of pressure here coming in. Do you ever send the tackle blitz around here, right? There's chameleon skink is, I think, on. I think it's on a go for it, uh, which unless you play an art, the, the blitz has survived go for it. That he will be able to just pound into that skink, and then try and put some pressure on because you know the lizards are going to play for eight turns. So I'm I'm here thinking I'm I'm, pu I'm putting pressure in. I'm going to go in and see what I can. You know, can I force a score in five turns, four turns? You blitz the skink. Yeah, I'm going no, for the skink here. No, yeah, yeah, no yeah, yeah. way. No way. You have to blitz the saurus. Wow. This source is 100% the target. Then you get to pressure all three skinks. Oh. And the ball heavily. Three tackle zones on the ball. All of these guys base. Like, just an L-shape, right? L-shape all your players. Real, real big commit. Okay. I think I think is the play. Well, he's doing your line of play. Chat, what do you think? Go for the skink with a tackle or go for the Saurus with... Not the tackle. <laughs> oh! Oh, this is so hard to re-roll. You can't. You can't, can you? Yeah, you can't. No. Oh, that's that's a opportunity. I mean, you could have done, right? Like you could have done. The, yep. the the payoff for the pow is massive potentially, but with with you know with overtime looming, yeah, that's one of the things, right? You know, so like <clears throat> saying about how how important it is to receive for being able to use your all of your rerolls. Diamond really wanted to use his reroll on on defense there, and if this had been the first half, I think he does reroll it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and the reason he's not rerolling is with the overtime looming, and uh, you know, funnily enough, if he'd kicked, maybe he would have maybe he'd have gone better for him. I mean, that was a real big reroll. At least he had uh, what what I like about Blood Bowl three compared to Blood Bowl two is this, you know utilization of the entire team turn and the time bank on big decisions like this because that was a massive potentially game deciding decision and it was great that he had all of the time but he's he's not used a lot of his time bank here diamond down to two minutes of time bank strider used pretty much all of his time bank on the one turn attempt but you know he found the solution yeah just uh, yeah, didn't I'll, get the dice i'm fine with him using yeah, strider using the time bank on the one turn because that potentially gives you the option to then go and win the game in the second half DM had used his time bank very heavily against Hero, I think, in the previous round. So we were all watching the overtime, and he was playing overtime with, with no time bank, I think Caelan was, was, was broadly talking about, which is bonkers. Yeah, yeah, he was down to a minute like pretty quickly, and then he was down to 10 seconds, then he did use all of his time bank. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he used all of his time bank. But it's there to be used, isn't it? So, yeah. you know, fair enough. He, he, got, he got the offense done. <laughs> And imagine if he'd not used his time bank, but didn't score. <laughs> so I think, you know, people are trading that all day, aren't they? Yeah. Corn Knight says he was 75% to power the skink, but only 54 to the Saurus. I think that the, 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 the conversation is more about the, the payoff of what happens if you do power the Saurus or versus power the skink. So in, in my mind, uh, I went straight for, I'm going to hit skink, one, because it's easy to, yeah, easier to kill it. Two, I get the bobble. And then I can send the the, the biggins round, and I can put indirect pressure on. Jimmy's line of play was 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 safer, and then lets you put more pressure on the ball uh, without potentially being able to bobble said ball. Oh, this is a tough spot. Huge. Yeah, this is the thing to re and like look how much worse this is if he'd got the power right. So like he would have had to have rerolled yeah. this a hundred percent if. So there was the kind of trade off there for Diamond using the reroll by using by him using the reroll. There, there was a lot more chance of then maybe forcing Stride to use the re-roll the next turn. So maybe he should have re-rolled that. But again, only 55% for the knockdown. But even the push opened up pressure, didn't it? Yeah. So it was uh, it was an interesting one last turn. But Diamed is playing well, isn't he? He's certainly on form. It's funny, like form, you know, doesn't feel like it should be something that matters <laughs> in Blood Bowl. But it is, right? Like yeah. playing a lot and, and playing well does matter. And oh, wow, he's on the both downs. 
So, anyone under any illusion about why? Apo. Apo. Yeah, yeah. Apo. Absolutely. Yep, 100%. Turn yep. two with a drive. KO. Perfect. Perfect use of the Apo. Why, why is block so good on, you know, strength four things? That. <laughs> yep. But then, you know, so is the guard, right? Like, if he, if he couldn't have cracked those guys, then then the guard is overwhelming, isn't it? Coley and six guard Blackhawks were hilarious. <laughs> like, it was just looked so crazy. Like, lizard men were just having to pass the turn. <laughs> they just couldn't do anything. <laughs> so, four's good, but yeah, block is really good on, on strength four players for sure. Yeah. So if you're a new coach, what you're trying, what we're trying to get across here is you take block and then you take guard. Well, you take guard and then you take block, but you take block first. Um, when you're when you're kind of working out probabilities and kind of like, you know because kind of, obviously the, the clock's a massive factor here. How long did it take you into your kind of your your block bowl career, should we say, to kind of really kind of master probabilities? Like you know, kind of in a moment be like, yeah, bish bash boss. That's exactly what you know I could work with here. And was it was it kind of like a a learning process for a long period of time? Did it come quite instinctively? How did how did it work for you? For me, it was instinctive when I was 14. <laughs> Earlier than that, when I was 10. I just knew the dice, baby. Just when I was 10, yeah, when I was 10, actually, because that, that was when you had, like, the 2d6. Um, it was really long ago, nothing like it is now. Um, but but then I knew all about probabilities and everything from that, so I was I was straight into the probabilities, knowing everything instantly. Nice. But, but the chain of results and the re-rolls, really hard to work out in your head. Mm -hmm. um, there's a program called Samba Action Calculator, and now there's Blood Bowl Dave, and they you can plug sequences into that and it just tells you what the percentage is uh, with, with how many rerolls you have. And, th and that's a real good tool for like, you can use that to learn, mm -hmm. you know, rather than learning I, probability. Can I suggest we add to the line of Jimmy Fantastic merchandise, Jimmy Fantastic calculators? Because I would buy one <laughs> immediately, immediately. Yeah. So, so for, for me on that point, uh, I think I didn't start playing Blood Bowl until I was an adult. So I'm not in the same situation. And... I realized fairly early on that you needed to know this sort of information and you need to know it like really quickly because if you're spending time yeah, sure. calculating yep. this or that, then you've only got a finite amount of time. You're wasting time where you could be thinking about the general grand strategy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and, and when I'm teaching people to play, it, 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 I teach it in layers. Ooh, first action double skulls with one reroll. Oh, he doesn't even that. think about it. He doesn't even think about it. Wow. Oh, wow. Stridey whitey. Wowzers. Oh, oh, he's going to be under the cosh now. This is like potentially four Saurus down. Yeah. And the Blitz. Well, five yeah. because one's already down. And okay, they're only 55% knockdowns, but it's not <laughs> un It's not very likely for it to be six Saurus down, but it could be every single Saurus could get knocked over this turn. I, I love... J J for me, <laughs> nickname Jimmy the Dice Whisperer is, is beautiful. What a beautiful name that is. Jimmy the, Jimmy the Dice Whisperer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was, I was uh, you know, I was a bit of a maths nerd when I was a kid. You know, I like, I, I love, I've always loved maths, <laughs> and uh, I just, I just like probability, and yeah, yeah, I was all over that. But the sequences are a bit tougher, right? Especially to work out yeah. in, on the fly is uh, is a bit tricky. But to, to round that out, what, what what you've got to try and do is first of all, you need to understand the mechanics of the game. So, what is a two dice block? What is a one dice block? Because you can't work the probability out if you don't even know what you're going to be potentially rolling. Mm -hmm. So start with understanding the player's stats, then look, work into uh, how does that actually impact the game? Is it a one dice, two dice? Is it a two plus dodge? Is it a four plus dodge? Get that sort of stuff. And then once you've got that, learning some of the more easy to remember probabilities. Yeah, what is a two dice block with or without block? What is a, uh, just some of the dodges? Learn those. There's only 15 of them or something you need to learn. Once you've got that information, then you can start really spending your time thinking about the strategy. Yeah. Yeah, you really have to know the basics. Yeah. So he's done it this way, I, I guess, to hit the crocs is what he was thinking. Interesting, because like he, he stopped him. He gave up. An, he could have had an extra block there. Yeah, he's not going to... He's not. He can't possibly hit everything, can he? No. I think he's going to hit the two Saurus. Do you think he's going to rush the big one around and stand it in front of the ball to try and provide a bit more support? Yep. Oh. So he's hitting the crocs. I oh, guess. he is hitting the crocs. Yeah. And that, so that's why he had to, because to do that, to facilitate that, he had to do this, which is, it has cost him a one block overall. So mm. he must have thought knocking over the Crocs was uh, was big enough to do. So traded re-rolls at least, like, you know, uh, diamond down to two, but... He's down to less than two minutes of time bank as well. 
And there's yeah. potentially two more dry, uh, two more halves here, right? This this halves hardly started, and then it, there's there's potentially another one. Yeah. Oh wow! Huge power saw. Yeah, I didn't I didn't really think of him knocking over the Crocs. Honestly, that's why I said like this could be five or six Saurus down, and it it is uh, four <laughs> it, Saurus down and the Crocs. Yeah, that's nice. It, wow. This is horrible for Diamond. <laughs> yeah, really good. Got that guard in, hasn't he? He's got the guards in now. And, you know, after last turn saying, this is why you take block on your strength four, guys. This is why you take guard on your yeah. strength four, guys. This is this is a nightmare for Strider to solve. Actual, oh, I guess hmm, maybe like a skink dodge and then some kind of chain here. But, well, it's uphill, though. So I don't, I don't think there is a chain. I, I, I think it's you're dodging the ball here. Because the, 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 the big one that's marking the ball is protected in part by the other guard big ones. So they're really nicely spread into the mix, aren't they? They're yeah, not really good guard, yeah. Yeah, he's done really well there. Uh, Adam, one of the things that's really powerful about guard is if you can get it into the middle of the of a line and then have the edges not be guard, then dealing with the middle is normally the hardest. Normally, if you're solving a line of players, you go pick an edge and you work your way down it. Mm -hmm. But with guard in the middle, it makes dealing with the middle almost impossible and you have to go to an edge but the, get, the guard spreads out a little bit and pushes the sides as well. So this is really tricky. Mm. He's dodging here. He's got to. 11% to just lose the game. Ish. <laughs> yes. Ish. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. It's not necessarily a loss if he fails to dodge here, but uh, yeah, it's it's looking really grim if he does. Yeah. Also, he's going to have to dodge the other skink as well, right? Just uh, there's no... Yeah. Uh, there's no, no, there's no... I don't think he can. Can't get a two no, right? can't. even with the no. assist. So yeah, that's going to be a dodge. Maybe this source will get surfed. Yeah, awesome. Oh, we popped dodge. Pops dodge gets it done. I don't even know where the blitz is. Like this line, but that lineman's one day. <laughs> like everything's <laughs> okay. That's so that two now. yeah, yeah, he brings in for the assist. Yeah. Oh, he could have done with some nice dice this turn. And he's not getting them. Well, no, he, he fa didn't fail the dodge. He got wonderful dice this turn. <laughs> Yeah, it didn't lose the game. That's always a bonus. Yeah. Nice. That's with some dice he's got away with that. Yep. Yeah, Raging's right. Yeah, move the skinks of centre back. Like that's effectively what Raging's talking about there. He's moved them, recovered, and then piled down that left flank towards the next turn. Yeah. Interesting so, now because like the 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 surfing this Saurus is totally on. But do you commit the three actions to do it? Or do you try and chase chase the skinks around? Chasing movement eight players with dodge around is uh, is not usually something that wins you the game, is it? <laughs> so are you asking me if I do it? Or are you asking the right thing to I'm, do? I'm asking the, 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 the viewers what they do. Uh, I know I know you're making the surf handy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to surf the crocs. Uh, <laughs> Has he seen something completely different? Because that's that's no surf. No. Is, is there is is there some sort of chain push? It doesn't look like it. Is it? Do you think it's up to Diamond now to flood the left-hand side of the field to try and prevent the skinks from gaining more ground? What's the, what's the what's the play here? I think that's what you have to do. Yeah, I think you have, you have to switch your, as much of your team over. But this is what lizards do, right? They switch from side to side, mm -hmm. and they've got movement eight skinks <laughs> that, that, have, that can dodge. So if you're if you're chasing them backwards side to side, you just lose pretty much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's it's tough, but you kind of have to because if you don't follow them side to side, they'll just punch through, and then they're they're clear and they've scored. So yeah, he goes for the ball base, and then try and free up players at the side here. Yeah, I, I guess what he's trying to do is put him back in the same situation, right? It, that last turn, he had two 11%s that if they fail, the, the, yeah, GG, and neither failed. Okay, well, let's let's try again then. Yeah. And, like, these guards are great, right? Like, after this block, you'll have three guards shutting everything down. So I guess that's why he pushed this guy in yep. to, 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 to push his guard in. So he's just got absolute dominance. And this is four players... To be fair, it's four versus five, so it's it's kind of a losing proposition <laughs> for him. But at least they're completely dominated. Yeah. I'm making a go for it here and tagging that skink that's lying down. Because next turn, that lying down skink is going to stand up and provide an assist. And then the ball carrier and one the chameleon skink going to blitz through. What he, what he could do is, yeah, he's got this knockdown. This big one can come in, right? One, two, three, four, yeah. five. 
Double GFI. Oh, wow. Oh, only one. I like the double to here. That would have been wild. But maybe this is better, right? It's less dice. And uh, it's less of an overcommit if it uh, if it doesn't come off. Because, you know, it, this is the thing. If you over-pursue the skinks, they'll just scoot straight past. But it was would have been really nice, wouldn't it, to, to mark all three skinks. Yeah, he's in, he's in another bind. This is really tricky. Yep. Oh, man, I would have loved the double GFI. <laughs> It would be really good, wouldn't it? It would yeah. be really good. Very strong. But would you? Have, it's only sixty-six percent to work without putting a reroll into it. You, you've then got to put the reroll in. Yeah. Whereas I think something like eighty-two or eighty-four to not need a reroll. So, yeah, that's, it's that's the that's the trade-off. That's like, like knowing the maths, right? Yeah. So yeah, you can say as a newer player, well, the best square is there, therefore I'll roll the dice to get there. But what we're talking about is not putting that extra emphasis on the rerolls and understanding that this matchup has got another half to go on top of the one we're in, mm -hmm. potentially. So your resource, your rerolls are a resource you need to protect. Yeah. Tricky. Yeah. yeah. No normal tabletop, you do both. You put the, yeah, you put both you in. both yeah. GFIs, but yeah, an eye to the overtime here. Well, I mean, speaking of tables, how the tables have turned since you know, the exact <laughs> mirror of like last the last you know, um, yeah. half. Oh. And uh, lo, lo and behold, you know, Diamond 1-0 one, one up looked like everything was against him and suddenly now it's Strider who having to, is trying to trying to find a way out of what is essentially kind of a bit of a bind isn't it yeah I, I mean, incredible incredible defense from Diomed um mm. no disrespect to Strider but like it's easier to do that kind of defense that he did right because he had lizard men yeah. with seven strength seven strength four plus guys uh, it's quite easy for lizard men to put to put defenses in a bind but this is actually just like pretty great play from diamond and i know there was the early dub skull that uh that strider ate but it's still really good positional play from diamond he's gonna have to make the other three plus from the skink that's marked by the mighty blow here so i'm i'm predicting a one dice blitz with the lying down saurus on the guard yeah here we go doesn't matter just get through yeah and then the guard uh, the skink needs to go and stop the thrower from just two dicing the ball Yep. I'm sure he would have liked the power to put pressure on. This has got to work. And this this is why lizards are so strong. <clears throat> right, most teams don't recover from a situation like this. Yeah. Yeah, if it like this is kind of the reverse, right? This was kind of the first mm -hmm. half of Diamed, and Diamed had to do it with agility three players that were like movement five and six. <laughs> and then uh Stride is doing it with movement eight dodge players, so like and movement, his strength falls on movement six. So oh, gosh. this was never too crazy to, to end up in this kind of situation. It was was always pretty likely. And that's the problem Problem for Diamond now is it's probably, pro half's probably done is, yeah, it's probably done. Hmm. So, yeah. So what do you do now? Right, how, how are you rehashing, yeah rehashing how are you fixing this it's probably going to blitz the saurus and base the ball oh god <laughs> sounds depressing doesn't it but, uh, <laughs> it's just <sounds> depressing <laughs> it's it's not great odds it's not great odds to to you know like bl blitzing a saurus first of all is you're unlikely at, you know 55 percent to knock him over you're not that likely to knock him over and uh basing the ball is usually pretty useless but um that's quite, you know, oh, wow, well, Big. there you go. So he just blitz the skink and base the ball, which, yep. which is more exciting than uh, blitzing the Saurus. The problem is now that the Saurus is dominating that lineman, whereas if, you, if you'd knocked him over, maybe you get the AV break, and then maybe you get a lineman next turn. But now it's like guaranteed lineman out. Yeah. Now he can bring the big one back to mark the skink that's furthest forward. And, and I think Strider's going to... Well, he's going to have to score quickly here. Right, he's got to. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Mighty Blow guy just walks six squares back to pretty much where your cursor is now. Um, somewhere in that sort of region. I don't like the square he's in because then the Saurus can block the lineman and follow into it. I think you probably want to be one square to the right. Yeah, there. Or he could, or he could go here. Yeah, yeah, tagging the skink. There's add another 11% chance of it just doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah, don't, hated it. don't hate that at all. Ooh, wow. Wow. Mm, is he trying to get away from the lying down Saurus, maybe? In the middle of yeah, the field. Yeah, yeah, I guess he was. Ooh. Ooh. Spicy. Oh, that's that that changes things. 
So now, because now you, you, you're you a lizard, you've got to sideline cage this. Mm -hmm. So you're blitzing with a Saurus near the ball, you're dodging away both the two Mark Skinks and you're making a sideline cage, and you are hoping to hell that it doesn't go horribly wrong. Because there isn't really another fix on this, is there? <laughs> I guess you could you could hand off to the guy in the end zone, right? This guy could dodge in the end zone. Oh, yeah, and that's you could nice. hand off to him. So you've got the score this turn, and you might have to go for it this turn. The other option is just these guys all bang everyone down, and you pull back to here, but it's turn 14. It's a bit late for that, isn't it? And there's a, there's a long way to go <laughs> to reconnect to these, but it could be an option. Yeah, I... Just thinking which I, which I prefer. So he's going to go for the... Yeah, that blitz makes sense. Yeah. This was the more That's... obvious play. That, that It's a bit crazy, the idea of punching all of these guys first. I think this was the more intuitive one and probably better. You can put the skink... The ball-carrying skink can now go and stand on the 10 square on the gates of the sideline if you want to play the safer line. And then the, the, the skink that's marking the big end... A lot of ball carrier oh. dodges, isn't it? This is threes made now, isn't he? Yeah. Three eleven percent to lose the game, more yeah. or less. Yeah. And, and and he's had other three uh, uh, one in nines that he's also had to work, like the guy on the sideline to create the cage. That there, he had to make the cage. And, and I'm sure there's been at least one other where he's yeah. just got to make the cage. What happened then? Oh, man. Double skulls. <laughs> Double skulls, yeah. I mean, this is a lot easier to eat, this one, isn't it, than the other yeah. one? So now the tackler can come in and stand in front of the ball, tag everything else, another guy behind him. Yep. Decent. This is a decent decent turn again for Diamed. Very impressed by Diamed. I mean, you know, he, he yep. was top of the ladder for most of the season. He's obviously just playing well and uh, and it's really showing. But what a huge part of your game, defences as well, obviously. But, you know, yeah. events is one thing. We kind of, you know, say about the lizard men have such a great way of getting around and the skinks and the movement and such, but... With orcs to defend like this, Diamed is he's in he's in the he's in the final for a reason, fellas. He's in the final for a reason. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Gets the power, gets the stun. Really nice. Interesting that he pushed him to that square rather than one back, right? So it's does not a double screen. Uh, now obviously with against uh skinks, the double screen isn't effective, but it means that it gives him a bit more lateral movement if he can deal with the tackler. Um, yeah. The line orc for me goes and stands on the sideline. I, I, I learned a very painful lesson that skinks can just dodge down sidelines. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> from back in Blood Bowl two days. <laughs> Adam, to, to catch up on that, I, I was playing a, a, a finals game like this mm -hmm. and it went to overtime and I just didn't spot that skink can just go three plus three plus three plus three plus three plus three plus right and this guy did i think it's eight three plus dodge rolls in a line <laughs> oh double God. go for it did it work of course it did um, <laughs> well it's you andy of course yeah. it did um that was that was painful Ooh. i'm not sure about that because no, I... that's just three plus three plus to get out yeah it's stand in front and then as you say well it wasn't it's not alignment is mr throw but with yeah. that stun you could have just made a solid three line <laughs> So he is leaving the sideline play on, and but it's only one re-roll, and it's all through tackle. So it's pretty unlikely this three-three-three, or maybe uphill, uphill, right? Probably the uphill with a re-roll is is the better play. But I mean that's ropey, isn't it? It's not. He's not going to want to do that. Is this the big one, fellas? Well, dodge the dodge the skink that's not the ball carrier into the fourteen square, and then the ball carrier is a one D on yeah, the tackle, yeah. and that, that's the play, isn't it, right? Yeah. It's three plus with a re-roll, three plus <clears throat> with a re-roll, three plus with a re-roll, because they're all the independent actions. Yeah. That's the play. Yeah, that is the play for sure. And to remind remind you folks at home as well, this this is, to square this up, to go into overtime, remember, the person who loses this will go into the lower bracket, the person who wins this will go to the grand final tomorrow. So the person who wins this guarantees themselves 1300 I think 1300 yeah guaranteed so, so that do nice. that dice roll there we're talking about is about 500 euros oh, massive <laughs> the stakes are there chat what's going to happen will Strider be manage to score or will Diomed manage to keep him out yeah this is the play he makes that dodge yeah In yeah I was just thinking do you do you, do you, do you even consider doing it oh Ooh, he's got to re-roll it he gets that pow Huge. But it's two rerolls to none going into potentially. Oh, he's failed the dodge. Finally. He finally fails the skink dodge. 
There's been a wow. lot, right? That's yeah, gonna be yeah. like the seventh. So, yeah. and now the th Mr. Throw perfectly placed to recover the ball. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, and I know like the meme here, but I, I would have done this completely different. He's already done this in a different way. I'm pushing the skink that stood up off the field. Yeah, he's um, gonna do that, yeah. Okay, he's gonna go this way instead. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, he's got to move the tackle in front first, right? That's you've got to move the tackle in front of those two guys. Yeah, now he's going to run that other blitzer around. Because you don't even need to score here, do you? You just need to no. stop the lizard scoring. Yeah, so like some kind of cage here. I I'd even consider fouling here as well. Like, just t to limit the options for this you know, big and foul on on one of them. Because then the, the ball carrier is probably three dice uphill. It's, an, it's another tackle zone, though, isn't it? So, oh, wow, well, I think he should have decided where this big one was going to go in case yeah. the pickup failed and moved that there first and just mitigated against failure because the success state is amazing, right? The yeah. success state is amazing. So maybe maybe that was the best um, square to leave him in, but I think he probably should have attempted to mitigate failure first because if he picks it up, it's, it's over, right? Like, this, this, how on earth do you get the ball here? Dodge through tackle into an uphill, needing like double pows. Yep, gets the dodge. Does not get the double pow. And he that rolls a skull. Wow, is that raps? That is raps. Wow, I mean, we got to say what a what an unbelievable performance Diamond's put in there to confirm a place in the grand finals. We said that you know minimum of thirteen hundred euros to get through to that final. I mean, this is this is obviously humongous here but testament to, to diamond managing to change things around you know we look at turn three where things looked pretty pretty dire uh, for diamond there you oh, go no, no, I, don't, hey. I don't know where it comes from it just it just comes out of nowhere um but i mean managing to turn things around but there andy was huge he, he, he made it work yeah he absolutely he made, made it, it work. he made it work there we go not, not quite as good but thank you yeah thanks for playing yeah um but i mean i mean jimmy you, you see there as well Strider has to navigate, okay, how do I kind of try and get the ball back and how do I you know, score? But then that second half doesn't manage to infiltrate as Diamond just, the defense just seemed so lock solid. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a huge double skull early on for him and he'd already had to use the reroll to pick up the ball and he was just in so much trouble. So should he have rerolled that double skull? Maybe, but then, you know, it's it's really hard, isn't it? It's your last reroll. It's so hard to commit to using that reroll and that just, you know, that dissolved his line then you know everyone gets knocked over the crocs gets knocked over and he was just under intense pressure for the rest of the drive yeah can i remind myself as well um did you predict strider to go through there as well jimmy i think you did didn't you i did yeah. told I you did, yeah. told you that, yeah. never never go with jimmy fantastic <laughs> it's always gonna end in tears it's always gonna end in tears um i mean well, you know, lizard men as well we kind of see say how strong they are but the orcs managing to vanquish them on this occasion um what would you have done differently and was there anything you could have done different was there a particular moment you thought that was the one that i I would have changed things up specifically, or how would you play it differently? Uh, I thought I, I thought they both played fantastically. We, we talked in the commentary. I said this is one of being one of the best player yeah. uh, finals. So so that sort of covers the next statement, right? What would I have done differently? Um, no, I don't know. I don't know. Not really. There's not there's not nothing massively standing out. Um, things that I think you could talk about that the the failed. Uh, dodge that killed the skink in the first half, right? If he goes and fetches that ball, suddenly that ball is seven squares south of where it actually is. Strider goes through. Um, Diomed gave him the option to do the one turn. It didn't work. If that works, Strider might go, yeah, that's not that's not GG, that point. That's yep. It's fine. Um, what Strider just, he got himself into a bother and he had to keep you know, dodging away with a three plus on the ball. That was the biggest problem. Yeah. Like, how do you solve that? Um, that's the next problem. How do you solve it? I mean, let's take a look at the brackets as well. I catch you guys up to exactly how our tournament stands here uh, after that uh, grand final there. Uh, as you can see, oh. Diamed confirming a place. Orcs go through to the grand final. The Orcs are there, baby. They've locked it in. Uh, and of course, Strider not out of the competition, which I think is going to ruffle a lot of feathers here, Jimmy, for the lower bracket, thinking, okay, Strider's going to come down now to us and with the Lizards and the, and the prowess of Strider. This is this is dangerous times. Yeah, this is this is, this is like, you know, putting a hand grenade in the loser's bracket right now. They're all going to want to. <laughs> They're not going to be too happy about facing him for sure.
Yeah, indeed. I mean, um, for you guys as well, did you get it correct? Did you predict correctly that Diamond was... I think, I think that Strider was very much kind of like the, the, the favorite, I guess, in some capacity there. Um, but it's going to really kind of, uh, I guess, make the players as well, there, Andy, kind of like waiting in the wings with their players, the low bracket match is coming, which we're going to feature here on the broadcast as well. We'll take a look at the, at the low bracket as well, actually, to, um, to remind you of what's coming your way too. Um, to bring, uh, you can see their Strider down into that bracket, just waiting, just waiting at the top of the mountain, saying, bring it on. Come at <laughs> yeah. me. Come at me, guys. Uh, as you can see, those two matches, Anarion versus Artemis Black and uh, Call Troop versus Hiru as well, uh, will all have to battle their way through that match, then the next one, before even getting the chance at Strider. Yeah. That 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 whole bracket there, I mean, Anarion Artemis, which I believe is the next game we're going to cover uh, shortly, that is an absolute corker. That's the one I... Yeah, That's a that corker. Yeah, that's the one I've been looking forward to. Um, I want to see how does Art play passively, or is he going to go aggressively? I guess we'll we'll talk about that that shortly. Yeah. And then the uh, the all Spanish uh, other final. So we're guaranteed to get a Spaniard into the last four ish, four and a half or whatever it is. That's right. Um, so it, it, it's cracking. Because at this at this point in the competition, every match ends in one player leaving, one player progressing. It which does I, from now, yes. From now, from this from yes. this point onwards, from this point onwards, which kind of like makes yeah. things, you know, makes the stakes even higher, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, not every single game, right? Because the final is a best of three. So there's a potential oh. Diomed drops the first game, comes back, wins 2-1 against whoever he faces in the grand final. And uh, best of three, unknown territory, really, for, for Blood Bowlers. It's really great to see, you know, really makes this final special. Do you think there's, do you think there's, with the, with the talent that we've got kind of in, in the lower bracket still, who yet to compete, we're going to watch them very shortly. Do you think Strider will... With the players that are left, do you think there's a hunch that that's trying to may face Diamond getting a re the revenge story might come up and Diamond might meet them back in the grand finals later down the line, Andy? Yeah, I think I think so. I, mean, I think he'll just want to win just to try and push his way back into the finals. I, if I was any of those coaches now, yeah, I'd, I'd want to win the money. Wow, I mean that, that that's that's a free holiday. That's I don't know, it's a free PC. I don't know what it is you're going to spend the money on, but I want to win. I want to be the guy that won it the first time because you, you just get to keep that forever. Then, yeah. So, yeah, that, that's that's amazing. Yeah, it's good. I mean, I'm sure we'll kind of uh, it, we must have found some kind of trophy or something. We we'll have to find something. Maybe maybe a, a Jimmy Fantastic calculator on like <laughs> some kind of like trophy cabinet. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Figure out. Figure out. Um, of course, that's all coming your way here on the broadcast too. So make sure to stay tuned. We have three more matches today. If I'm not mistaken. Three more best of ones coming away later today, and of course tomorrow we'll have a best of one followed by a best of three as well. So loads more blood ball of the course uh, of the, the next uh, kind of 24 hours or so. Um, the next matchup as well, kind of like let's turn our attention to that. We're yeah, we're kind of thinking about Anarion versus Artemis here as well. Um, what what can we look forward to? What can what can people at home kind of look forward to here, Andy? What do you think is coming our way? So I'm really curious first of all to see how Artemis plays this because he's played so far. He's played quite. I would say recklessly, but he's played without any care in the world with his Rattigar. He's just thrown <laughs> it in and watched what happened to it. Um, and Inarian's team is actually built to try and you know, pick things off, foul them, and remove them. So if he plays like that and he doesn't get the knockdowns, that Rattigar could be leaving very early on, and we might see a very big power shift. So the Underworld currently are favourites, I would say. Maybe not for long. Who knows? I, I'm, I'm curious. Or is he going to play it more passively and controlled? He hasn't built his team like that. He's built it to go for, for damage with the fouls and the Rattigar. Let's see. I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, I mean, Andy's, Andy's summed it up perfectly there. <laughs> um, hasn't left much for me to say, except <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it's, it's interesting. What, I guess Inarin does have the two tacklers, and he'll, he'll want to put those tackle players onto the goblins and restrict mm. their movement. Andy actually has a... Uh, Andy, Art has a lot of goblins. Normally, people go more snotlings, and Art has gone more goblins, and the goblins really struggle versus the tackle more than the snotlings. Still, snotlings still have a two-plus out. Goblins are just a straight three-plus. So... Um, the tackle will be interesting, and yeah, as Andy alluded to, like the grab on on Biggins, uh, Blackhawk. Sorry, it's really they're really so confusing yeah, now. It's all um, one thing. <laughs> so the Hawks. grab, you know, they had Brawler, and a lot of people are like, oh yeah, the Brawler mitigates things. It, it's Brawler is really not very good, but the grab is really cool, and we can see some a lot of chain blocks. Really, you know, maximize the knockdowns against the low AV underworld team. So we should see a lot of hitting, a lot of damage potentially. From Inari and, and then huge gang fouls and and yeah you know the Braug is the big target if you can get him down massive fouls it, I think this could be really tricky for Artemis yeah yeah and on the other side of it of course I think Cold Troop versus Hiru if I'm not yeah, mistaken that's correct yeah um, which is going to be uh, equally as inviting for everyone watching at home as well because you know another massive 
semi-final is it semi kind of loser's bracket semi-final S yeah. Is, it, yeah. is it that yeah that, that is what it is yeah, yeah, that, yeah. thank you thank you. that's <laughs> what it is um another you know huge uh matchup with a head-to-head -head there where we've seen kind of both players you know i think hero's kind of like been in the winner's bracket kind of going you know for what one zero victories the, like, the first few rounds there uh whereas cool troops had a kind of an opposite story having to kind of grind out multiple kind of different kind of like matchups you know trying to get these humans all the way through um but what do you think hero versus cool troop is gonna kind of uh, rustle up for us so me personally i find that that matchup pretty hard it's humans versus dwarves and if i'm on the human side that can be really tricky so uh, yeah we've we've bet against uh call trick pretty much every round and somehow he just appears like <laughs> he just floats to the top and then just appears so I'm going to go with with Call Troop, right? I, I think okay. he's somehow he's going to do it. Maybe by predicting on him, maybe he's going to it's going to kill him off. I don't know, but it'd be nice to see humans in in the later stages. I think they're a more finesse team. They've got a bit more about them. Maybe we'd see a little bit more exciting play. So for that reason, I'd like to see Call Troop go through. Okay, I, I mean, I'm going to ask you, despite the fact that it's, I mean, the the curse needs to be broken. By the way, this is this is this is a bit kidgy. If you if you say call troop, are you thinking call troop? No, I'm thinking hero. <laughs> okay, um, okay, okay, okay. I like this. Uh, why why hero? Well, call, call troop got to the final of the NAF kickoff event, uh, which was like an you know, old tabletop style tournament. Wasn't one of one of the ways to qualify for this, and uh, he did lose to myself in the final, and I had dwarves. And this is the problem for humans. You know, they've got the movement advantage, but movement is the hardest advantage to leverage by itself. They don't have the agility; they only have movement, and it's so tough for them against dwarves. You know, versus like a good dwarf coach, it's it's tough for them. And and Hero's pretty good, so this is going to be really really tough for Coulter. He's going to have to like play really pretty desperate i think you know maybe not right maybe he'll just roll a bunch of dice and it'll be easy for him but i think it's going to be really up against it you know kind of how diamed was you know he'll have to be making those plays he'll be under pressure and, uh, and how strider was as well actually funny funny in this game how how under pressure they were on, on their offensive drives both both teams and uh, yeah, i think culture is guaranteed to be under pressure yeah and and, and hero unlikely to be under much pressure the problem hero has is just you know getting over the line at all because dwarves are so slow yeah um so you know as you said he, he's only winning one nil um when he won so it's it's it is going to be interesting because you know people people generally i think overestimate dwarves and underestimate humans but I still think Dwarves are the favourite. And uh, I'm backing Hiru 100%. 100%. You heard it then. Of course, in the chat, let us know who you think is going to go all the way. And both of those matchups coming our way uh, very, very soon here. Uh, you mentioned, I, mean, I want to touch on Tabletop very quickly because you've talked about it a whole bunch as well here. And again, I'm, I'm taking into account there's lots of viewers here kind of thinking, Tabletop, tell us more. Um, in terms of the Tabletop, how has it influenced, or how does it help as well, do you think, kind of like you know, playing Tabletop versus uh, the digital side of things here as well? Because I mean, you've played tons in the past as well. Um, how has it kind of inspired you, how have you learned so much from that and kind of brought it into what you do kind of when you're playing digitally? So I think it helps you in situations like this. You're playing a tournament setting, you go, you, you understand that the games matter and you just sit down, you've got a you know, game face on and you play. That's different to playing, for example, digitally when you're playing ladder, when in, any individual game has a little bit less weight attached to it. Um, so I, I think you know, to tabletop players like Strider, uh, myself, they get less less bothered maybe or less pressured about the uh, the the, the the, the the knockout element of this okay i can i can deal with it i'm not stressed going in i should be able to put my best performance out okay um for you guys at home as well um make sure you keep getting questions in i'm sure that lots of viewers got questions about certain things we've seen already in the chat as well it's been very entertaining keep it coming in we, we love to read that love to see it um and we've got lots more action obviously you saw the matchups coming our way very very soon too uh we're gonna take a break soon actually and give you guys a chance to get some refreshments and relax for a second before those games take off and we'll have a you know we've got a, a bunch of sour sweets here i thought the vibe is on sour candies by the way i'm a huge i'm an ambassador for sour sweets I, i'd have eaten the whole packet but that did me crunch 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 down the microphone so yeah um, yeah, if you hear someone eating, it's me, and I'm eating the sour candies. <laughs> if you just hear chewing and Andy, Dave, everyone, Andy, yeah, Dave, yeah. he's the he's the you're, you're the you're the kind of the dice whisperer. You could be the the chew chew uh, whisperer. Chew, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah, chew whisperer, yeah, the chew chew yeah. chew guy. I don't, we'll, we'll we'll think of it. Think of nicknames, please. We'd love to hear those from you guys. Uh, we'll take a break uh, in just a moment's time. But um, for you guys, yeah, make sure to stick around as there's loads more Blood Bowl three season finals coming your way, and we have got one. Heck of a beauty coming up, actually, haven't we, in our next matchup, too. Uh, Anarion versus Artemis Black is next on the agenda. Uh, we'll go to a quick break, but do not go anywhere. There's loads more coming your way from Season Final and Blood Bowl 3 in just a few moments' time.